the problem with most of the videos online about clearing up your pond water is that they'll show you someone doing an application but they don't show you the results or well, what worked so today i'm going to show you almost a two month study or testing that we've done out here on our pond to clear up this water i'll give you the products i'll tell you what i'm doing and show you the results so hold on hey guys uh i'm going to go into a few different subjects here so stick with me but Basically, in the description below, I always create a web page on our website that has all the actual products because I'm going to be talking about quite a few today. But this three acre pond that we have here, now we had, if you didn't see it, we had a video put up where we took close to 100 trees off that pond berm. If you have a pond berm and you have trees growing, and we had big trees, you need to get your trees off your pond berm. The roots will grow into that berm. When the tree dies or the roots pull, the water follows the roots and it can destroy your pond berm. So watch that video. I've done a stocking video out here. Um, we actually put crawfish in over a year ago. And man, let me tell you what, we have got a ton of crawfish out here now. We ordered them online from Louisiana. They shipped them up here free. Uh, we did our stocking programs. So we really focused on um, stuff out here. I recently killed off nine big snapping turtles. When I say big snapping turtles, I'm talking 20 to 30 pound snapping turtles out here that we've killed off. So we're really managing this for the wildlife. We've got wood duck houses now in place because we do have some wood ducks out here. We've got blue herons. Yesterday afternoon, I had a couple geese come in here. We have deer down it. So this is a real kind of managed place. There's confusion as to what makes water sort of dingy, and there's two things. Number one is gonna be soil runoff, and the only way to cure that is if you have any kind of dirt around, plant. Plant clovers and rye grasses and anything. You do not want bare dirt around your ponds, anywhere around them. That'll just create that silt that comes in. Every time it rains, your pond turns brown. There's nothing I can do to help you with that other than to tell you to plant and keep it planted. Next, the biggest, one of the biggest culprits, especially in the springtime, is a single cell algae. That single cell plantonic algae actually makes that water kind of murky and you gotta battle it off. Well, as you can see, I've got aeration. I've got an aerator pump here that goes out to two aerators on my pond and then we install that fountain. Now, I don't wanna spend two or $3,000 on the aeration and a font, so I'll put a link to the cheaper ones that I bought off Amazon, and they've been out here for a year and they've worked just fine. Next, what is actually working to clear this up that I'm adding? We have found that there is a three-phase, a three-prong phase attack to clear up your, your water. Number one is dye. Um, you wanna dye your pond and you wanna keep dyeing it. Unfortunately, you gotta spend the money. <laughs> We have a spring that feeds our pond over here constantly. And then there's a big black tube back there where it constantly runs out seven days a week, 24 seven. So I have water in and water out. The problem with that is, is I have to keep treating it. That's my problem. So it gets a little expensive, but I have to come out here. I wanna keep my pond dye really strong. That'll block out some of the, out, the sunlight from the algae. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in beneficial bacteria. Um, I've been using both, I've tried both the tablets and the liquid. I think the liquid's a little bit easier and better distribution. And then copper sulfate. You can use copper sulfate in a liquid form. I'll put the liquid form down, or um, you can use the granule. The next thing is how do I apply this? They're really, I, I have found I get good distribution two ways. Number one, if I get in the kayak, and I actually go out to my aerators and I dump this pro these products right on top of my aerators, there's a water column that goes up and spreads out and I get good, good distribution that way. The other way I do this is I go back to the bridge where there's a, little, there's a little spring that runs through the woods back here and I can treat the incoming water and that will come in here and fill up this. So you can do it either way. Today, I'm gonna go back to the spring and treat that. Plus I gotta check my raccoon trout back there. Now, here's what's funny. Um, when this was a little bit cloudy, it was really cloudy before, I'd be throwing out my little MEP spinner and I wouldn't catch any fish. Nothing would hit. Last week, after we did all these treatments and this place finally started to clear up, it was fish after fish after fish. 
huge bluegill, bass, everything came alive and they've been hit. If I can't see my lure coming through the water, the fish can't see it. You're not gonna be able to, to catch fish. And that's my goal. My goal is to have water clear enough that when I'm throwing out my lure, a little met spinner, that I can see that spinner coming through the water. That means the fish can see it. That means my pond is, is doing well. Uh, while I'm here, I am also throw a lure and see what the hell happens. I'm talking about right there. So, if my fish can actually see my lure, I can catch the fish. Isn't that pretty? That is just gorgeous. Look at him. Love that. Gotta pause him in the raccoon trap. I'll just let him go. No need to be killing possums. I have a raccoon infestation. We have taken, I think it's 29 off the back side of the property, and then I saw some prints over here, and I've already taken two off of here in like three days. So uh, they've been de decimating our turkey population, and if we ever want to have any chickens at free range up here, we got to get rid of these raccoons. But this is, this is that spring that comes through this whole area down in here. And then it runs down here, it runs nonstop. I don't care how dry it gets, that runs nonstop down to here. So all I do is I just take all my products and I just put them right in here in this little spring and then it feeds in the main pond. You really aren't that bright, are you? The door is open, get out of the cage. The door is open. Leave the cage. Oh, Go. Normally I would wear gloves, but I'm gonna risk it today. <laughs> what I do is I look for kind of a high flow, the areas that are high flowing in this, and I treat the areas that are higher flow rates. So remember, this is kind of a four prong attack when you're doing this. Number one, aeration. If you can get aeration in your pond, put aeration. Not only will it increase the uh, bacteria activity, but it will overall ecosystem health for the fish. Again, I link to the cheaper fountain and aerators that we use in the description below. That's number one. Number two, bump up the beneficial bacteria. The bacteria do something in the water that actually helps fight the the algae problem. Number three, copper sulfate. Copper sulfate really is the only thing that's going to be able to attack that single cell uh, algae that's going around. And number four is pond dye. Block that sunlight and put it in and put it in heavy. <laughs> I mean, we the, it seems like the heavier we put it in, the better it is. Now we're also going to be out here, we're going to be working on a little bit of the ecosystem. So as an example, we pulled off these trees off of here, which there was a lot of shade. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here on this backside and I'm actually going to hinge cut, low hinge cut some of these trees that we really can't see from the house. So what is hinge cutting? Uh, it's really done in deer management practices where you cut about two thirds of a way through a tree and you push that tree over and part of it's still attached and the tree will actually grow you'll actually have green leaves on that tree. So we're gonna put probably about two or three of these trees hinge cuts. We're also taking any time that we have some scrap trees that we have to pull down, we're starting to make sort of brush piles along the bank. And we found that instead of in the middle, actually along the bank is really beneficial because a lot of the small fish go in there and hide from the larger fish and everything else. So it's an overall ecosystem that we're working on here. We're planting some good grasses. Um, we're taking care of the water. We're monitoring it. I do have a, a pond testing kit. Maybe I'll link to that too. But just, it's taken a long time for me to learn this. I've spent the past year, year and a half battling this. Now let's talk about one more thing and that's the duckweed. 
we did have a major duckweed problem. We were gone for six weeks last summer, and my son texted me and he said, dude, I'm sorry to say you this, but we had a fish kill off. This whole pond was covered with duckweed. It was pretty, it was bad. You have to, there's a spray that you can get, and here's how you treat your duckweed. I'll link to the spray down below. You put it in a backpack sprayer, and you get into your kayak, and you wait for a day that you've got a little bit of wind. And when that duckweed blows up against one edge of a pond, you go over and you actually spray the duckweed. You actually spray the duckweed and kill the duckweed off. Why is it so important? It's because of the way that duckweed replicates. It basically can, a, a single piece of duckweed can replicate almost every one to two days. So it's not a problem when you got 500 pieces of duckweed, but when you have a million pieces and that starts to replicate every few days, I'm telling you, you can get a solid green pond immediately. As soon as I see duckweed this year, I'm getting in that kayak and I'm spraying if I see any duckweed. That's about it. I hope this has helped you guys with some real results. I'm gonna throw a couple of lures and see what the hell happens. I'm telling you, my favorite lure to use out here is one of these little MEPs. Um, my son on top water, when we first bought the property, caught a seven pounder down in that corner. And then about a month and a half ago, I was throwing one of these little MEPs over here and caught about a five pounder. So we've got some nice fish in here. As soon as I turn this camera off, I will catch a fish. <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> Man, there's nothing more fun than these damn bluegills. These panfish, they're just a blast.